What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we are going to check the codes on both the W204 and the W205. So we're using an Altel scanner. Um, it should be a good time. This is a, a video that was inspired by uh, one of my viewers that left a comment. His name's G Lasser, I yep. think is what we, we uh, went ahead and thought it was. Correct us in the comments, G Lasser, <laughs> if uh, if we're wrong. But let's uh, let's get going, and uh, you stay tuned. All right, guys. So the main premise behind this video uh, is in the comments. We were told that uh, sometimes the that what erroneous faults basically is what we call it is erroneous faults can pile up in the ECU and kind of bog down the whole process of the CAN bus and all of the communications in the car. So a uh, viewer was uh, curious to see what kind of codes would come up when we checked it and we're about to plug it in right now and check it out. So uh, Jonathan has paid for this himself. Uh, if you don't know his channel already, I have already linked it and it will be in the description below. He does some cool stuff over there on his channel with the scanner, so go over and check him out. Um, the Altel runs about what, $200? It was around 200, yeah. Okay, so 200 bucks will get you the scanner um, and it's pretty turnkey. I haven't seen a scanner quite like it before. So uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna jump into the driver's seat here and then Jonathan is gonna walk me through it. All right. All right, so with this scanner, what I found is uh, scanning OBD2 is this. So it's gonna go ahead and try to get a hold of the, uh, the computer by running a bunch of different protocols to figure out exactly which one responds. All right, so as it turns out, it did find that it is your car. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and click OK for system status. Control modules, okay. I'm going to come down here and read stored codes. Okay, doesn't look like we have any codes stored in that particular module. Pending codes. Nothing there. There are permit codes. Okay, so that one seems fine. Let's go down to this module. Read. Nothing there. Pending. Okay. Nothing there. Next. Oh. Read. Pending. Nope. Okay. Let's see if we can get any. So everything looks. I mean, it looks fine there as far as. So we don't have any codes. Hmm. Nothing. What were the, uh, what were the, were there any symptoms that you were... Nope. None whatsoever. It was just... No, it looks like huh. it's not supported, I guess, in the onboard monitor test. Well, I'd say it has no codes on it. Yep. I would say so as well. Alright, cool. All right, guys, so as you saw there, there were no, uh, basically no stored codes on here, um, nothing that was uh, bogging down the system. I was hoping I might see a code for, uh, for my, uh, oh, the module that controls the keyless go. I was oh, going to yeah. see if there was a, uh, if there was a glitch in the system, and that's why it always does not recognize the key, because it's still doing that. Um, if you watched my video on five things I hate about this car, um, that keyless go is always hit or miss. So it was annoying. So let's go over and check out Jonathan's car, see if he's got any stored faults. All right, so OBD2 is going to find how it can talk with the computer. Okay, that's us. It's funny that none of that shows up on the camera. None of it does? It doesn't show up. So it looks like on mine, I only have two different control modules. I'm just going to hit the system status here. Doesn't look like we have anything. Let's see if we have any stored or pending codes. No? Oh. 
check the other module as well. Yep. Okay, doesn't look like I have any have any codes either, it looks like. Let's see if we can get any live data. Sure. Complete list. This is one of the things that I thought was really cool is because you can actually see things like ECT. I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, we're, the car's not running, so we wouldn't see RPMs or anything, but you can actually get, like, actual readings from, like, the different PIDs that it has access to. And the other day I used this to uh, diagnose which O2 sensor uh, was actually bad on a Honda Civic. Cool. Because I was able to see that, like, the, the reading from that particular one was so far out of bounds, and it was without climbing underneath of it or testing a sensor or anything. But uh, yeah, it looks like there isn't much, Sweet. much well, going on here. I like this tool. Yeah, there's this... a lot of a lot of options and features. And it seems like I mean it's pretty well, uh, pretty well, well versed in the vehicles that it can communicate with mm -hmm. as well. Um, like I mean we have it hooked up to Mercedes Benz right now, but very recently I was using it on my 2000 F250 uh, Power Stroke to auto bleed the brakes, uh, the ABS system up front. So. Seems to uh, seems to come in handy, and I, I think I mean for the money that I spent on it, uh, I think that I, I definitely would have spent that amount of money taking my stuff to a shop to have them auto bleed and read codes and do the same thing. No doubt. So I I mean as far as like value, I would say that in the first like week of having it, I've already paid. It's already paid for itself. So. All right, guys. So this was purely a curiosity video and uh, kind of just taking the viewers suggestions and seeing what kind of codes may or may not be on the car uh, bogging the thing down. I think the Alltel was awesome. This thing, uh, this is the maxi check. If you already watched the entire video, you can tell on the top of it, this is the maxi check. Um, I think this definitely uh, is worth its weight in gold. I think this is, is very good for what it is. So, um, or for what it costs, you probably can't do any better. And I haven't seen a scanner on the market that will do that. Um, heck, you look at a Snap-on scanner, right. you're six to seven thousand dollars for a high-end, high-end scanner, yep. and then you have to update it all the time. You have to buy the Euro package. Um, I did look into buying one at one time. Uh, I was looking at spending thirty-five hundred bucks ish for a, a very nice scanner. Yep didn't come with any package you needed for any of the cars that I had. So I had to buy the British package, the European package, and the German package. So they don't- thousand a piece? Yeah, so they, they were at least 500 a piece. Okay. So it was like, okay, well, what gives? Like I just gotta keep updating all three of those to keep up with just the fleet of cars that I have. Yep. So at the time I had seven cars. So I had, I had, um, I had domestic, European, a British and, and German all at the same time, so it didn't make any sense for me. Yeah. I wish they would have had this five years ago. I agree. Um, this thing should have came out a long time ago. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quick, easy video uh, inspired by a viewer and, you know, gave me some content to do. So yeah. I'm glad we didn't find any uh, pending codes or anything stored on the ECU that may or may not have been a problem that didn't trip the check engine light. Yep. So both the cars uh, checked out just fine. And, um, yeah. I guess we live to see another day. Right. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Go check out Jonathan's channel. And uh, as always, click subscribe if you like our content. Um, go ahead and ring that bell. Get notified every time I'm coming out with a new video. I'm publishing every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at noon. And uh, I hope to see you guys around the channel. And we'll see you in the next video.